So yeah, like I was saying, we'd be filing out the school bus sometimes early in the morning, yeah? And we'd be walking up to the school gates. And you might run in a little bit late because of the bus, the traffic or something happened. And at one point too, I lived on the other side of the island. So in order to get to my school, where I used, you know, because I was living, I used to live quite close to school, like maybe 15, 20 minutes away from the school. But when I moved, I was like an hour and a half, two hours away. So I'd have to get the bus early in the morning. And even because I'm coming from the other side of the island, for, you know, for the last few years I was going to school. And I have to get the bus quite early in the morning and sometimes you still end up getting there like just close to when school's beginning if you see what I mean. Like just a few minutes late because I'm coming from so far and the traffic and whatever else, you know. Plus you're on a bus, the bus stops here and there, you know. Um, as I remember sometimes like we'd be all filing out the bus and the bloody principal would be there waiting, waiting with a cane. You know what I mean? And if you're taking too long to walk to try and go to like the assembly, because you used to have like assembly every morning where you have to go and you'd go into your individual like, class groups, if you see what I mean, and you're, you know, you'd see your teacher, your, your main teacher for the day, where you, you know, they make sure that you, you know, mark you present and whatever for the day, whatever else. Um, and then once you'd have your assembly in the morning, whatever, but you know, for half an hour, 45 minutes, then you go to class, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I remember, yeah, and sometimes early in the morning, you, you, like, you'd be running just a little bit late and you'd be walking a little bit too slowly. And he'd want to come up behind you with a cane and start bloody like rip, like trying to rip you, right. like you know what I mean, with a bloody cane, like you know what I mean, like. That's what I mean. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? That the strictness yeah. of being a minute late, maybe you know. Or but I mean, I remember even one time I got to school. I think it was like five past nine, and I was just walking down the drive, and we had we used to have a principal principal called Mr. Adam Mr. Adams, and. I remember one time I was just a few minutes late and I was I was trying to get to class. I was hurrying, sorry, hurrying to get to assembly because I didn't want to be late. I used to hate being late, you know what I mean? And, you know, I used, to, I used to feel kind of. You well, know, everyone does, don't they? Um, really? But it was hard for me because, like I said, the last few years I was coming from the literally the two hours away, so I had to get really early. And if the bus was late or whatever happened, some delay or something happened, then I, you know, it would cause me to be a few minutes late. And I remember one morning, mate, he was chasing me with this bloody bamboo. I was like, listen, mate, like, listen, I've just got off the bus. Like, I've been up since like half five in the morning getting ready. You know, I've got up at half five this morning to get the bus at half six so I could try to be here for half eight, nine o'clock. It was just, you know, and there was some traffic and I'm a few minutes late. Like, you know, he's trying to chase me with this bloody bamboo. I'm like, no, nah, mate, like, you know, keep your fucking back. Excuse my language, but keep your back. It's funny, you No, but I used to, I, I, it got it's to not some, funny, though. It's it got to a certain point where I used to just say, listen, don't, don't, don't. Don't try and come hitting me with some, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not on that. Like, I'm sorry. How old were you then? I don't even remember, mate. I probably, I was probably like 14, 15. But I remember, like, telling it, telling these teachers straight. Like, I remember we used to have a few different teachers. Like, there was Mr. Thompson and a few other different teachers and shit. Like, like they would see you and want to, you know, try to hit you, you know, try to have a cane with them and want to hit you with a cane, you know? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not on that. Like, you know, if you, if you, you know, I'm not an animal. You know, don't try, you know, come try beating me up with a cane or some shit. Like, you know, not having it. You know, I remember when I first started going to secondary school. If I did something wrong, it was normal. You go and you know, you go up to the front of the class and you might get hit. You know, you might get two or three lashes and then you go and sit down. But I remember when I got to like, like third form. You see what I mean? Like after like the third year of school, I was like, nah, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Like, you know. I just kind of put my foot down. I was like, you know, and if you didn't accept, if you didn't accept the physical punishment, they would suspend you. Didn't accept it. So then you you would you would get sent home with a letter to your mum and your or your parents, depending on your parental situation at home, and then they'd have to bring you back to school in order for you to come back to school, and they'd, they'd obviously have to they'd explain to you parent what happened and why they suspended you. It's very complicated. Yeah. So just because you would refuse physical discipline, mm -hmm. they would suspend you from school. And that happened to me a few times where I was like, no, like, I'm not taking your, you know, not taking that shit. Like, you know. So I don't think, I don't believe in all this so, strict stuff and all that, yeah. But that yeah. like schools being strict whatsoever, it should be the opposite. Well, I, what, what, what I really used to hate about that work too, right mate, is that that's some of those things affected me too, but that's why I didn't end up finishing like my last year of school. And it's like silly things that like that is probably things that affect that affected me. And it's just like, listen, mate, like just because I've refused physical, refused to you for you to come and hit me with a bamboo like five or six times because you feel like I've done something wrong, and you've got the authority to do that because that was the way things were in school when I was. That's just the way it was. You know, that was the norm. Um, 
so I was like, I'm, I just got, after the first couple of years, like I said, I was just like, no, I'm not having it, I'm sorry, you know, keep your belly bamboo, you know, shove it right up your ass. Shove it. Funny, you got to keep thinking of um, him chasing you with a bamboo. And I remember one morning, yeah, they're not kind of chasing me, but like I was walking fast, like trying to get the assembly, and he was coming up behind me, like saying I'm late. Guy, I, it was an older principal at that point, so he looked like he was in his late, like, late 50s, early 60s, close to retirement. Um, and I remember him trying to hit me with his bamboo, I was like, no, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, I mean, you know, but, you know, hit yourself, you know, just fucking smack your head, you know, smack, funny, is it? smack yourself with it, mate, you know, don't, bloody, you, know. you think about this, yeah? And I used to get in trouble for that type of shit, you know, and, and well, other shit too, but I mean, that contributed towards, you know, stupid shit like that contributed towards, you know. But you think about this one then, yeah? Mm. Let's say this a child, a 10 year old child, yeah? So he stayed with a strict person for all year, mm. okay? And, it, you know, he's got a strict strict person, really, you know? Yeah. Get out of bed this time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That child would learn nothing in that year, do you know what I mean? Mm. This, is, this is the truth. They, they don't know nothing about hate, apart from hate, basically, mm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you, if a child at that age, same age, spent it with somebody that was compassionate and loving and fun. Yeah. They learn a lot. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, it's true. You know, and I find that the schools, right, like my time they were quite strict, okay, but not as strict as my mum's time. Mm -hmm. And they were stricter back. Yeah. You know, so they are getting a bit easier I think but in time. I think we've gone the other way. well, I was gonna say I don't know what it's like in the Caribbean today because I haven't been there for the last 11, 12 years. I've been back in the UK obviously. Um, but here in the UK, I've realised that the schools have gone obviously the other way, and that's why the kids are bloody running riot today. A lot of the young teenagers and stuff are running, running riot. No one can tell them anything, mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want to do, parents have no say, teachers are now told, now told they don't have a say. You know, they're allowed to do what they were doing, they're, te they're only teenage kids, they can do whatever they want. And that's why the lack of discipline in society, I've noticed back here in the UK since I've come back, in terms of like the school, the educational system, is leading to a lack of discipline in society later on. If you see what does, I mean. It you does know? need discipline. Yeah. 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 But... Compassion is kind of discipline as well, mm. in a funny way, you know, once you learn compassion, I think you learn quite a lot of things, and empathy and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, like, the more compassion that you are, the more you'll understand things in life, you know, I'm yeah. talking about with nature itself, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I, 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 I can't remember what I was going to say earlier on, but it's gone right in my mind right now, I've gone blank. Yeah. <laughs> Like I was saying, you know, yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I was going to right now. But like, for instance, you know, you can be the best, best math, math, mathematician, okay? You can learn maths all your life, yeah? You can learn every language in the world, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can learn, be the best drawer, best artist in the world, yeah? But if you haven't learned compassion, you've got no education at all, no wisdom or nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? You've got nothing. Yeah, you know, it, 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 that's what that's how it all important is. You know, and I, this is what baffles me about edge. You know, schools themselves, they learn, they teach children a lot of things, but they don't teach them the right things like compassion. Mm -hmm. That's number one. You know, it really is. You know, to learn, teach a child how to love another child, and teach them to love themselves. Yeah, you know, like say. What I was saying in the first episode, um, part of this show, that children are not really taught at school how to love themselves um, in the correct way, you know, and that's what's gone wrong, I think, in society in itself. It's, you know, it's just completely, to me, schools have really done a lot of damage more than anything. They've done more damage than good. Mm in a kind of way, mm. you know, it's kind of made pe a lot of people arrogant yeah. of, you know. Like schools, like, schools have, been, have, have multiple different reasons, right? First, indoctrination, that's the first one. Um, as we all know, the curriculum that 
teachers teaching schools, whether it be from nursery school, right up to secondary school, right up to senior education, is all provided through the government, governmental curriculum. They're taught basically, they're given a certain academic curriculum of what they have to teach by a, within a certain period of time, within each individual class as they advance. Um, the next one being is they needed somewhere for the kids to go so that the workforce, they could be a workforce. So after Second World War, they introduced, in the 60s, 70s, they introduced the idea of feminism to get, to kind of break up the family unit a little bit and get women into the workforce as well, if you see what I mean, to bring women into the workforce, you know? Um, so yeah, that was the whole idea. So they needed somewhere for the kids to go. So now you've both, you've not only got the dad out, because before it used to be predominantly the man, the breadwinner out and about providing for his family, and the women were predominantly, that's just how things were back then, I think women were predominantly at home, and looking after the house and the kids, and, and, and happy happy to be a housewife kind of thing, you know? And the man, but after the Second World War, and the rise of feminism and everything else that happened, it kind of destroyed the family unit to a degree, and, um, you know, like I said, it brought, they wanted every, everyone into the workforce, you know, because the more people in the workforce, the more taxes are being paid. Um, and they're making even more money. Not only that, but, you know, they can indoctrinate your kids all day long. You know what I mean? Five days a week while you're at work and have no idea kind of what's really going on. Obviously, you know, they're getting an education and, they, they, you know, they've got, you know, they usually have, you know, usually have a nice environment and have, you know, you know, they enjoy, you know, most kids enjoy school, generally speaking, you know. Um, I, didn't so, um, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. But I must say, in the school, that it, it, my son goes to school, I must say, he, he seems to thrive there, I must say. He, so he must, be, he must be in a very good environment and have good teachers, you know. Um, Do you think that each so, child that goes into a classroom, yeah, yeah. they go home, mm. and they've got completely different parents, you know, each... You know, some some one child might have the nurses a mother, yeah. you know, or a fireman as dad, mm. right? And then another child might be you know, his dad might be a dustbin man, yeah, whatever, yeah. Mm. And he's working long hours, or you know, another child might have a lorry driver as his father, or whatever. You know, it, it goes on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where, yeah. You know, so the child goes to school, and you know, like I say, some children haven't got parents there. You know want them to know them, don't they want to know them, do you know what I mean? Or they don't even want to help them with that, you know, whatever, because they're not just educated themselves and so on, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, a, it's a domino effect really, isn't it, you know? Like, so I think like if we were all educated in the proper way, in the correct way, like about compassion, about kindness and all these kind of things, you know, like if, if children weren't, didn't have no strictness whatsoever, wouldn't that be lovely? Yeah. Yeah. Why is there a strictness in the first place in a mm. way, you know, like, what, what's going on here, you know, it, it, it's a bit crazy to me, well, you know, I know that we're living in a bit of a dangerous world, wherever, but there's no need yeah. to sort of protect children this much, you know, or be strict with them, mm. you know what I mean, you know, they're not doing anything wrong, they're just being born, you know what I mean, yeah. you know. Mm. I think you have to set boundaries with kids. This is a conversation for maybe a whole, a, a whole different, you know, another episode for sure. You know, it's something you could talk about for a long time. Um, but I think with the kids, you definitely have to set boundaries. There's got to be a respect boundary. Well, in this world, I think. You know? In this world. Um, I, but I think it also, it teaches your kids that, you know, respect and politeness and, and having manners and being polite and all these things are very important. Um, so if you teach them from young that they have to respect, especially their mother and their father, especially the way they speak to them and the way they conduct themselves, if you see what I mean, especially when they were a child and living under your roof and you're providing absolutely everything that they need and require and more sometimes, you know, financially, whatever. Um, so, you know, they have to understand that there are, there are boundaries, you know, at the end of the day you are their parent and you love them, you love them more than anything in the world. Um, but at the same time, your job is also to not only be, you know, it's okay to be their friend, in, if you quote unquote, you know, um, but you, they also have to understand that too, you're, you're their parent. And sometimes the decisions that you might make in order to protect them, or to advise them, or to guide them, um, or to kind of stir them in the right direction, 
um, might not be favourable to them. They might not be happy about it, they might not like it, they might not agree with it at the time, um, but that's just part of being a parent. Um, sometimes you have to do what's in your, in your child's best interest instead of what they want. If you see what I mean, because sometimes what you what at that at a certain age, kids aren't always always able to make the correct decisions for themselves. If you see what I mean, um, especially like if you're getting caught up in the wrong crowd. Let's say, for example, let's say you're a young lad, young teenage lad, um, and you're getting caught up in crime and certain other things and whatever else the case may be. Um, at the end of the day. You might you might be living in an area. Let's say you might you might say, okay, I need to move my child out of this environment. Let's say for example, and you know your child might not be very happy about that. If you see what I mean, might not be might be quite upset about it. Might be losing their friends. Might be you know having to start over fresh somewhere else. You know, etc. Um, and a bit upset about it. But you might have had to make that decision as a best interest decision, saying, listen, I know if I don't get my uh, let's say your son says you've got a son say for example who's you know 15 16 years old and he's out in the streets getting up getting into god knows what what kind of you know getting up to whatever um you know at the end of the day you say okay listen you know i you know i know he's going to end up in you know he could potentially end up in prison or, or worse god forbid um so instead of that happening i'm going to try to remove him from, from this environment if you see what i mean you know um and it's a very similar thing to what my mom did to me be very honest too. Um, in certain circumstances, growing up, if you see what I mean, when I was living in certain places, you see what I mean. Um, but I think it's very important. Sometimes you have to make a best interest decision for your child, and you know, say you know you're not you, you might hate me for it right now, but I know in the future you'll probably thank me. You'll realise it was for your benefit, you know, um, for your own good. Well, I think like everyone's circumstances is a little bit slightly different, you know. Yeah. Like my going back to my life again, you know, my my dad, I loved him, you know, I tried to love him, whatever, you know, uh, but it was a bit of an alcoholic in my dream, you know what I mean? You know, and you think like these pubs, you know, and alcohol itself, you know, it is a problem to children, you know, like you think about children underneath five, right? It does nothing to alcohol does nothing for them, you know, apart from neglect. You know, parents go out, get babysitters, and they go out and get drunk. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, it's a new thing, you know, it's not always been around, do you know what I mean? It's no. evolved. Mm. It, it's slowly come a lot, you know, where, you know, like for instance, I say my dad just loved going out, you know, sort of after work, he'd go to the pub, you know, and I didn't really see him much, do you know what I mean? And because he had alcohol, you know, drinking alcohol all the time, you know, he couldn't really be much of a father, I don't feel, do you know what I mean? Because he was just happy to get drunk all the time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And at that time when my dad was a young man, you know, when he was twenty five, lots of men were doing that, going to pubs, gambling, you know. It, it was just the way things were, do you know what I mean? You know, and it was you know, the the government basically put these pubs here allowed it, you know, allowed people to make money out of it or whatever, you know. Mm. And it causes a big problem to it society to children. Mm. When you think about it, it's children that get hurt. Yeah. That's what we're, you've got to think about the children at the end of the day. Mm. You know, whatever the adults are doing, having a good time doing this and doing that, yeah. Has an effect. The children yeah. are getting neglected here mm. all the time. Right. In the new party system we've got. Mm. You with me? The party entertainment. You know, even our children are sort of playing games now all the time, do you know what I mean? You know, a lot of the children today are just coming home playing games, you know. Yeah. They don't know nothing else. Yeah. You know, you think, hang on, when they go to heaven, they're going to dream of just playing games all the time. Do you know what I mean? That's all they've done all their life. Mm -hmm. They may be gone, gone to work, you know, yeah. when they grow up. Do you know what I mean? They're just not have. I, I don't know, you know, you just got to sort of live the moment and get away from this. In a kind of way, like football, that's new. Cricket, all of it, it's all kind of new. And I think that. People are getting distracted too much. They're not living themselves, being themselves anymore. Yeah. You know, you know that's what I think anyway. Yeah. You know, as I say, I think it's all down to education. I seriously do. You know, I think like if everyone was educated about 
how to love. And there was love at schools, but because when I went to school, there was no love, no compassion, not much anyway. Yeah. Only very, very little. Yeah. Very little. Yeah. Um, yeah. To say on that note, mate, yeah. is, is there anything that you, any kind of, um, any final words or any kind of, you know, any final, any closing statements or anything you want to leave for the people before we wrap it up and call it a night for this week's episode? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, you know, I just think people, you know, just think people should have more compassion, you know, and um, I think that, as I said, if children, I think, if they were properly educated and loved, we wouldn't need a justice system, we wouldn't need all these courts, do you know what I mean? Well, I think we would, because there would still be the odd, there would still be... I think the world would be improved, yeah, let's put that way. There would always be things that would happen, but I think, like you said, education... No, no, even, I don't think people would get married if people were educated, do you know what I mean? There always be people out there that would do wicked things. There always no, be... No, I don't think, like, if... Honestly, I think if, if children were loved at school and there's more yeah. compassion at school, yeah, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be... Yeah, um, there wouldn't be shoot, shootings at sc um, school. Uh, shootings. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's all kinds of things like that. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, I truly believe that you know, if if, if every child was educated with compassion, mm -hmm. the world would be more loving. Yeah, mm, I agree Simple. with that. Wholeheartedly agree with that. I just think that, it's too strict. You know, mm. that's all. That's um, that's all I can say. I think there'd be more justice in the, in the world, or mm. like so. I don't think there. I don't think there'd be so many prisons or so many people doing bad things if they were educated properly, yeah? If it, that makes sense. Isn't that true? Yeah, I think so. If you see what I mean. If um, people were educated properly. I also feel too that if if people were given, if the world was a better place generally on a financial level, because there's also a lot of people who are educated and shit right, mate, but they just live in poverty. So sometimes crime happens because of poverty. A lot of crime and generally happens because of poverty. You get a lot of people that commit crimes trying to survive. But I tell you what, a lot of these people, if they had a different way of a different opportunity in order to make that money in a legal way, that didn't require, you know, if you see what I mean, that they could still, you know, make that money, they they probably take that opportunity over doing something illegal. If you see what I mean. But the sad reality is, is that in a lot of places where there are high amounts of poverty, you usually have high amounts of crime, you usually have big crime rates are usually the highest in the world, usually in the places that have got the most poverty, because people who are suffering and struggling to make it day, day by day, you know, have it to pay their bills or to pay their rent or to just put food in their stomach, is, you know, that, that kind of makes a lot of people turn into someone that they might, ne might not necessarily ever thought that they become, if you see what I mean, because they now have to try and do things that they would never normally ever think about doing or want to do to try and survive, you know what I mean? And that is a hard reality, harsh reality that exists for a lot of people, if you see what I mean, in a lot of places today. So I think a part of it is not only education, but I think a part of it is also better living environment and improvement in, in terms of opportunities, in terms of um, people being able to actually earn a, a substan substantial amount of money every month that they can provide, if you see what I mean, without struggling. I think, without, like, again, you know, like I talk about, struggling and getting in. Talk about putting the maximum wage, to so sort of balance people out again, you see, you know, because mm -hmm. I think, like, there's too many people getting rich and that's making people poor. Yeah. You know I mean, so you need to sort of, like, put a cap on how much somebody can earn. Well, as I said, the middle class right now is disappearing before well, like, lives, I know? think, like, that. If you put a maximum wage as you got the minimum wage, mm. say the minimum wage was ten pound an hour, I say, mm. and the maximum wage was fifty pound an hour, yeah, mm. I think you just need to do that, yeah, just to sort of give a control on the whole human race. Yeah. You got me, mm. you know. So nobody can, you know. For instance, you know, some people have got five homes or ten homes. Do you know what I mean? They got they they own lots of houses. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's out of order. Do you know what I mean? I think. Every every person should be happy with one acre and no more. You know, mm. do you know what I mean? I think people are allowed to have too much. You know, that's what's wrong. And they need to be controlled, all these people, do you know what I mean? And I think it'll balance the whole, 
you know, but it's what it is, isn't yeah. it? You know, this is what we've got. That's it. It's a bulk like this, you know, they've not put any rules and put no maximum weight for that because they like their money, do you know what I mean? They're not going to do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's the way yeah. this world is a little, like I say, it's quite wicked, wicked in many ways. And I think if you understand that, you're, you'll be quite wise, you know, yeah. to realise it is a very wicked world. That's so be it. very careful out there, you know, and don't get yourself into trouble. Keep yourself completely away from anything, you know, any evil, if you can, I, I feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, just smart. try just try to, you know, be positive in your own world, you know, and I think try to be helpful to other people if you can, you know, and kind. Yeah. Which is very important, you know, and I don't, it don't matter to me who I'm talking to, if it's homeless person or someone like, um, Bill Gates or anything, you know, they're all the same to me, if you sort of mean, mm. you know, they're, they're humans, if you sort of mean, mm. at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think like, we're all gifted, every one of us, and a lot of us are being rejected, and that angers people. You know, that that's the problem of the world, and lots and lots of people, you know, I think like, say a classroom of 50 people, right, only like 10 of them, do well when they, you know, or get the badges and that, you know, and there's like, you know, the rest of them sort of being put down in the rest of the pile, do you know what I mean? That's the kind of world we're looking at, living in, do you know what I mean? And like I said, there's hundreds of people out there, thousands of people doing jobs they don't even like, mm -hmm. you know. Millions, yeah. millions, if not billions. You know, and I find even sort of like the, the business world is a bit of a, a crime where somebody might employ a hundred people you know I find it a bit of criminal you know where that shouldn't be allowed in a kind of way you know it's a bit like it's a bit like modern slavery yeah and that's all I can tell you the modern day slave system but it, you it know is. it is what the it matrix, is the matrix quote unquote the matrix this is what it is yeah what you know mm. I think you've got to set the world as it is to be, yeah. if, if you want to be happy in life, you know, That's it. it's not worth moaning about it. Yeah. That's true. Anyway, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new episode. As you already know, this week's episode has been all about justice. That's it. Um, like I said, hope you guys have enjoyed the, um, this week's episode. I enjoyed it. We'll be back again next week with a brand new episode so please stay tuned for that um, if you're new to the channel and you haven't before please like comment and subscribe because of course that helps the channel um, and yeah good night god bless one love well up we'll be back again next week yeah <laughs>